for those that are clamoring for secession, the debt that Nigeria is taking from the World Bank and other financial institutions is going to make it very difficult for Nigeria to break up. I have my reasons for saying that. You see, some people go and lobby the United Nations and lobby other international organizations to recognize them as a country. The Biafran people have been lobbying, 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 creating international relationships to make sure that the World Bank, the United Nations support their quest for independence, sovereignty, yes, to have their own government. But how will that be possible? Will the World Bank support? Will the World Bank support a country which wants to break from another country that is owing them enormous debt? Enormous debt. You know that the debt that Nigeria is owing is over a hundred billion dollars. And uh, are we paying that money? Will the World Bank support a Biafra or Dudua? Will the world pass? Will China, the rest that Nigeria is owing money, will they support uh, the secession, the bacchanalization of Nigeria with all the debts that Nigeria is owing? A recent $2.5 billion uh, that was taken by President uh, Bola Tunubu is causing panic among financial experts. You know one thing about Nigerians is that they don't read. I don't know. These guys are daft. Nigerians don't read. They don't research. They're not, they don't care to know what is happening, what is going on. That's why the politicians, they do anything they like. They carry out lies and propaganda. They know that Nigerians don't read and research. They are just there to eat, drink, sleep, and do all sort of rubbish. $2.5 billion. No financial expert was able to explain to Nigeria at the moment the damage is going to cost Nigeria in the next 30 years. No Nigerian financial expert. It took an Oyibo man. I'll put the link, the link, I'll put the link at the comments. It took an Oyibo man to start explaining, explaining to Nigerians that this this loan that was taken by President Balamed Tunubu is, is a bad loan. It's going to destroy the economy. You are going to pay that loan for 30 years. You are going to take $2.5 billion and you are going to, in turn, pay over $30 billion. You can see that kind of loan. $2.5 billion was taken, was borrowed from the IMF. One of the conditions is that the first 10 years, you're not going to pay anything. You're going to start paying after the first 10 years. 1% interest on the $2.5 billion. Yes. Then after the first 10 years, you're going to start paying. And let's do this mathematics. You have a 100 Naira during Jonathan regime. You have a 100 Naira during Buhari regime. And you have 100 Naira during Tunubu's regime. What 100 Naira could buy during Jonathan regime, 100 Naira during Buhari regime cannot buy it. 100 Naira during Tunubu's regime cannot even attempt to buy it. Even now, 50 Naira is useless. 20 Naira, 10 Naira is useless. So imagine now, we borrowed this money during Jonathan's time. From Jonathan to Buhari, let's say it's 8 years, or from Jonathan to Tunubu is 10 years. The link is going to be on the comment section. I want you to watch it. How this financial expert analyzed and explained the negative impact this current loan taken by President Bolamet Tunubu will have on the economy. Nigerians need to be enraged but because most are daft, illiterate, and they don't know what they are going to do. That's just to eat and, and excrete. There's nothing, they, they don't add any value to governance, they don't add any value to the environment, they don't add, add any value, they are just religious, blindfolded ignoramus. So, imagine as a businessman, eh? I borrowed you $1 million during 
Jonathan regime. We know our currency is not dollars, it's naira. Let's say during Jonathan, Jonathan regime, a dollar is 150 to one naira. That means technically what I borrowed you during Jonathan regime was 150 million naira. Because if you convert the 1 million dollars to naira, it's 150 million naira. And I told you that start paying me this money with 1% interest in the next 10 years. So from Jonathan to Buhari, let's say it is 10 years. Or, yes, Jonathan to Buhari, let's just say Buhari or will still come to Tinubu, it's 10 years. The exchange, Naira depreciate, depreciate, it now got to 400 and 15 naira. Let's use 450 naira for Buhari. So that means what they are going to pay me is 450 naira times my 1 million dollars. I told you never to pay me for the next 10 years. Then after the next 10 years, you pay me with 1% interest. So what they are going to pay me during Buhari regime is 450 million naira. From 150 million naira, you are going to be paying me 450 million naira let's move with one percent interest so one percent of 450 million naira should be 4.5 million naira or for the 4.5 years 4.5 million naira so 495 million naira that's what you're going to pay me you borrowed you borrowed 150 million naira from me in the value of dollars and i told you don't pay me until you get me now it is left to you left for you whether you use that money you utilize that money within that 10 years let me give some people the benefit of doubt utilizing that money within that 10 years can make you pay up your loan but you know that nigerian president nigerian no they know they they are always going going deep, they are always mismanaging funds if we are not mismanaging funds, we will not be experiencing the weakness of the, the Naira will not be that weak that we are plunging ourselves into debt. A president printed 21 trillion Naira cash through MFLA. And nobody is probing anybody. Nobody is holding. Nobody is even willing. It is the will. Willing to hold these people accountable. Nobody. People that come and they promise everything during the elections. Look at the case of a president, printing to one trillion. No investigation, no forensic, no independent investigation, no nothing. Nobody is even, these politicians are not willing to probe corruption. Yet, they start going all over the world and they will borrow. And Nigerians are, will be the ones that will suffer it. Actually, from Jonathan to Tunubu's regime is 10 years. Okay, let's use Tunubu's exchange rate. So, I borrowed you 150 million, let's say $1, 150, $1 million, the rate of 150 is 150 million. Fast track to Tunubu's regime. And we are seeing that now, now Naira is $1,700 to a dollar. One million dollars as at 2015, Jonathan, and one million dollars now. How much will it be? It's not one point something trillion naira. One point something trillion naira. That is the debt that Tumbo took from from the World Bank. I'm trying to explain this as much as I can so that people can understand what is happening in Nigeria today. You are coming out to say the truth. You are being threatened. You see, and we have men and women that can die for, that can shed their blood because of standing for what is right. Nigeria, anything about anybody will not change. Nothing is going to change. You are there, you are there, you are afraid to see the truth. You are afraid to hold government accountable. You are, you are afraid to fight your right. As a human being, God gave you the right to life. As a human being, you are afraid. You allow evil people occupy positions of power. And these people now, 
they are evil. They cannot give what they don't have. What they are going to give to you is evil. The leadership you are going to get is going to be evil. They cannot give what they don't have. You sit down there like a drastically nothing, no impact. You are afraid to stand on your feet and tell the truth. One thing I like about egos of then, because egos of then can be compared to egos of now. We have many fools that are egos. We have many... I, I don't understand. The real egos were those of our fathers that stood and fought for what they believed in. These are the real egos. These guys had no fear. They are, they are people of integrity. People of integrity are not afraid to die because they know they are standing on righteousness and integrity. But when you see people afraid to die, afraid, they have a lot of baggage. They have a lot of, a lot of baggage with them. It is the corrupt person that is afraid to die. The righteous man is not afraid to die. Those days we have our forefathers who were Christians. They were willing to go sacrifice themselves for the gospel because they were standing right. How many of our pastors will be willing to tell the truth? Because they are in the flesh. They are looking at their congregation. They are not looking at Jesus. They are not looking at God. I'm sorry I'm using Jesus here. I'm a Christian. Those of our forefathers were brave men who could stand and tell truth to power. Look at the Ghanifa in me. I, I envy that man so much. He's already ready to die the next minute because he wants to stand for the truth. People think that if they die, they are missing. No, you die as a man of integrity. That is the best. You die as a man of truth, standing for the truth. That is the best. Do you think that life's Life ends here. You close your eye and sleep. You close your eye and sleep. Hmm? And you find yourself somewhere else. You think that life ends. You can spend 90 years here on earth. But it is an everlasting place. Whether you believe in Buddha, whether you believe in Allah, whether you believe in whatever you believe in, Taoism or Jesus or Judaism, there is a life here. There is this thing, cause and effect. If you plant, you reap. So you cannot become an evil person and expect life to be pleasant to you when you meet your maker, when you go beyond. So people are afraid to stand and call out the government. That's why an Oyibo man will be the one that will explain to Nigerians the implication of that $2.5 billion loan. I watched that video and I shook my head. This is one of the things that most of us want to do. But we are being restrained from doing these things. We need money to make research, but sometimes we have meager funds to make, to make research. We need some of the funds to, to get into some places to make research and understand how this economy works. Thank God for that man. We have financial experts, all of them read it around Central Bank, former this, PhD, ECA, AD, with all titles, all, all of you. But this young man, this young white man, Open the eyes of millions of Nigerians. While we have people with all their certificate and what have you, useless to the economy of Nigeria, useless to Nigeria, just sit down in office and start collecting money. Useless, very useless set of financial experts. We needed an Oyibo to start explaining to us the impact of a loan, too bad loan. The government desperate to fix Nigeria and uh, Akuko. The government is desperate to fix Nigeria. Akuko. Akuko. Desperate to fix Nigeria. Well, we have gone past those that will be brainwashed. We have gone past those ones that would be lied to or whatever. The government is making efforts. But you see, when you are clueless in a thing, you are clueless. When you cannot meet up, you cannot meet up. If it didn't day, it didn't day. See, when people when when it didn't day, that is when people will be doing gra 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 gra. It didn't day. You cannot fix Nigeria. I said it before. Some people are giving giving themselves hope. This current administration does not have any business with leadership with governance. These are political. This. Are politicals they need to they need to be 
in the university teaching politics. They have no business with governance because they don't have the people at heart. They have their family, their allies, and their whoever, partners. These are the ones that will benefit from this government. Look at Dangote. Make $10 billion. How much have you made as a Nigerian? This rich becoming richer and you, you become poorer. One though, I heard a report from social million, they are entering trillions within one year. One do within one year, you enter trillion. Hmm, that is wonderful. You, Nigerian, sit seated there, you are not concerned about how your destiny is being sold. So, Biafra agitators is going to be very hard, but there's nothing that is not possible. It's going to be very hard for you to get the support of the United Nations because of the loans, the debt that these countries are getting involved in. In fact, the United Nations is one of is one organization that is devious, that is barbaric, that is demonic. They are bent to hunt down African countries. They are bent to destroy them and their economy. They are bent to decimate the soul of the African society. Burkina Faso refused taking loans from them. African countries are refusing to taking loans from them. But you have a jagaban of Africa that supported the Buhari, Sai Buhari, to, they, are, they, are, they are becoming frequent visitors to the World Bank. So we are going to pay this money. And the brighter side should be that our currency should better improve. The brighter part should better improve. Somebody came out and said, she will have $35 billion in foreign reserves. And I, and I knew that. Not that I knew, I already know. That Nigeria has no go school. I will not even explain that to you. I'm not a financial expert. But it took me pain, painstakingly. I had to sit down to understand what foreign reserves. You have 35 billion foreign reserves and you're taking that kind of loan. I understand that as a businessman, you have money, loans are okay. It's good to take loans to do business. I understand that. But there are loans you don't take. I made an analogy. $2.5 billion under Timur's regime Compare it to $2.5 billion 10 years' time. Okay, you, you, you agree, you, you, you are hopeful that the Naira will come down. Uh, my brother, don't deceive yourself now. See, the government has tried to play you, play you, go here, go there, go there. They wanted to increase fuel. They look for stories, scarcity. Marketers do this. Hey, let's leave it here. 600. From 600, 800. Mm. They now brought in Dangote. Dango, they do this, they do that. They went front, they went back, they went everywhere. All of them just back, 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 back. When they come to talk at the media, it is you they are talking to. But do you know what happens in their closet when they are having meeting? Have you been to Sheraton? Have you been to Echo? And see where these big men have solid meetings that you will never know of at their back, at your back. You will never know of those meetings. That's where they strike the deals in the middle of the night. So they come to you, they play you propaganda, and they go back into their room. What will be constant is that everything will be increasing. That is what is going to be constant. And but that to this, that to this. Now they peg it at nine hundred or something. This one, that one, market at this, market at this, market at that. They peg it at one thousand fifteen and one thousand one fifty. So people are buying one thousand two hundred. They are deceiving you and you are there. I want to prove to you beyond all reasonable doubt that this system will not work. The, the United Nations, IMF World Bank, as is holding Nigeria, we are in no good. Where this IMF is holding Nigeria, in, my brother, in no good. It's no good. But we have clueless leaders, leaders that don't care. Now, these 10 years before we start paying, Trump will be out of power. Some of these guys that plunge you into this debt, they will have lived their lives. They will be in plenty. Why you will be taxed? More taxes. They will tax you and tax you and tax you to the extent that you, you, you will not be able to breathe anymore. While they're becoming richer, richer and richer and richer. That is the reality of the Nigerian people. I pity 
for Nigerians of this generation. More reasons why I'm saying I'm moving for regionalism. If it's going to be possible, let's look at how we are going to balkanize. The system is already rigged against the average Nigerian. It's already rigged against you, the system. Should we now want me to talk about Nigeria? Let's talk about Nigeria. Let's expose some of the things that is being go that is going under the bridge that you don't understand. The more you look, the less you see. So you think that 1,700 naira that it is now, by the next day it's going to come down. They play with the World Bank. I've not told you every other requirements, every other things they told the Nigerian government. I've not told you that one. You watch that in the video. I will not be the one that will come and be explaining everything for you. But I want you to know one thing. Build yourself to an extent whereby mm -hmm. your conscience will stand with your maker and say, I've tried my best in speaking the truth and nothing but the truth because eventually evil does not stand the truth. And when evil is in power, they will make sure they hunt down the truth. But you know one thing about these things I've understood? The more you bring down the truth, the more people arise. Nigerians arise, O oh compatriots. It is the call to come and obey and stand and fight for your existence, your right existence. You cannot sit down there and some people sell your future and the future of your children. You are buying bread 100 naira before now, it is 500. That extra 400 they are taking from you, they are paying it back. It is you that is going to pay that money. They don't pay anything, they don't lack anything. They get all their remuneration, they get millions, they have access to funds, grants, and everything. They seize your. Look at Wiki. You want to start seizing properties in Abuja. At the end of the day, when you find these properties, you might, you might go and find it in the hand of a government official. People are just carrying money, looting money every day. Thousands of dollars are just leaving the country every day. People want to make sure that they destroy Nigeria. And you are seated there. You are praying, Lord, help, Lord, help. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But faith without work is dead.